All right, we're going to get back to Master Chef. Fuck this shit. Cook any lobster yet? Not yet. I just started poaching them a little bit so I can get them out of his shell. I'm going to do a little Palms Maxim for the top. Wow. And uh, a little fennel puree. You Palms think Maxim. you're clearly the front runner because of where you come from and you have uh, your I experience? Think I, with I think I got a pretty damn good chance. <laughs> out of everybody here, Christian knows lobster. But his arrogance and not having any respect for the people around him have, I think, gotten to everybody in this competition. 40 minutes remaining, everybody. 40 minutes. What are you doing? I'm going to do a potato gnocchi, and I'm going to use the tail of the lobster. How are you going to cook that lobster? I'm going to poach it just till it gets firmed up in the stead, and I'm going to shock it real quick in ice so it doesn't overcook. Shocking lobsters in ice water for too long takes away the flavor. Good luck. Thank you. Alejandra, you seem very comfortable with not just the lobster, but with the ingredients. I love Asian food, chef. And when I saw the coconut milk, the lemongrass, and the ginger, I knew exactly where I was going. My favorite used to be Christian, but then he became a villain after Max left. Like, I liked Christian. He had, like, main character energy. You know, he had good backstory and shit. And then now he kind of is like a villain. He's on his villain arc. Just over 30 minutes. All right, Derek, what do you got for us? I'm going to try uh, butter poaching it. First time? First time. Do you think chef. that's a risk worth taking? Uh, I do, Chef, because I really need to sort of step up my game. OK. Aaron is out of his comfort zone. I've never tasted lobster, the chatter who has. Garlic butter over this curled lobster towel. That was shocked. Christian's making a uh, butter poached lobster with Palm's Maxine. Very restaurant style dish, but he's butter poaching the lobster, yeah. which can work for a pound, pound and a yeah. half lobster, but yeah. four pounds, it's yeah. a different story. I've never had most seafood. Yeah, kidding me. Piece of plastic in my mixer thing. Everything's going fine as far as my lobster goes, but I pushed down a little too hard, I guess, and it broke a piece of plastic off my food processor. Damn, he's too jacked. There's water coming out from down under. I feel a little frustrated with this water and this chaos that is coming to my station. It's just nuts. Christian's hot temper is starting to catch up with him. And honestly, I think he's being a My dish is going down the toilet. I'm going to have to come up with something. Can I get some new pasta? I mean, Bro, what is he doing? He's just like breaking everything. What the fuck is he doing right now? Like, he just broke like eight things in a row. How the fuck does that happen, dude? It's got to be staged, right? Can I get some new pasta, please? You gotta be kidding me. In tonight's lobster mystery box challenge, Christian's aggressive cooking style has ruined his fennel puree. Five minutes to go. Now, with only minutes to spare, he must reconceive his lobster dish. Can I get some new pasta, please? I have shellfish. Bro, stock. this man brought shame upon New England, okay? You can't be from that region and fuck up a lobster dish. It's like literally. It's like your genetic trait is being able to make dank lobster food, you know, and consume it. It's crazy to me. Leaking all over the place, and I had to get new pasta. I have some pasta. Christian, thank you. I got it. I'm really just pissed off that things weren't going my way, but I'm still going to make the best dish I can. Oh, I know my sauce tastes good. My gnocchi is good texture. Presentation, I know it's one of my weaker points. So I just gotta push myself and make stuff look a lot prettier. 60 seconds to go. Start putting those finishing touches. In the mystery box challenge, the judges select just three dishes to taste. The winner will receive a huge advantage going into the next round. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, uh -oh. 2, 1, and stop. Oh my God. Hey, said, bear. At this point, despite the uh, the chaos, I know I'm in the top three. My lobster was cooked really well, as well as you could cook a four-pound lobster. From here, the winner of today's he's gonna fucking bark at the he's gonna bark at the judges again like last time. Mystery box challenge will have a 
enormous advantage in the next stage of MasterChef. The first dish we'd like to see up here was singled out as a all-round restaurant dish that each and every one of us would see on our menus. That dish belongs Remember to- Remember he did that last time? It was crazy. Derek, oh, congratulations. Wow. Slow down. So don't drop it, don't I'm drop not, it. <laughs> I just feel great. That risk I had taken for this, it's paid off. Tell me about the lobster here. You've got a puff pastry base with a roasted garlic potato puree, a salad with yellow tomato, red tomato, some mango, and then it's a butter poached lobster tail on top. What I'm hopefully gonna get here is contrasts. Base, acid. I think that it's delicious, moist, sweet, and I really enjoyed the hell out of it. Congratulations. If you're gonna keep cooking like this, you're gonna be here a long time, That's my friend. Plan. That's Congratulations. Plan. Thank you. See how the lobster gives a little? That's that's just cooked beautifully. You created a really delicious dish. Thank you, Chef. Lobster's delicious. You've lifted the elegance to a completely different level. Congratulations. Thank delicious. You, well done. Hearing such successful people tell you great things about your food, that's something that's never gonna get old. That just feels good. The next dish had a great use of curry, mango, tropical flavors, really, really pop. Alejandro, can you please bring oh it up? Oh my God. I saw you put these in the pan. The sizzle was hot. And leaving it in the shell, brilliant. This is a Thai-style wow. red curry lobster. So tell me about the sauce itself. I reduced uh, some of the shellfish stock that was provided with some uh, celery, ginger, lemongrass, and the Thai basil, which is fresh. Amazing. To grill a lobster and for it to taste that sensuous and soft, buttery, that, for me, has been your best dish so far in this competition. All right, before I call up dish three of three, is there anybody out there who thinks their dish should be that third? Oh. Chris, yeah. why don't you tell me why you think you should be up here? I think the sauce is delicious and uh, my lobsters cook perfectly. Christian, you are not in the top three. You know, you went in thinking that you were gonna be number one, but then things started to go awry and it looked like there was just such an anger with your cooking. When you cook angry, I think it comes out in the food. <laughs> That's cap, bro. I feel like Gordon has never, Gordo has never cooked happy. All right, the third and final dish that we will be tasting here. Thank you, Boosted Dolphin. And that belongs to Jennifer. All right. I think Jennifer sucks. And it makes me feel like because I don't think she has as much food knowledge as I do. So how does it feel to be up here again? Feels awesome. Feels okay. really great. Walk us through the dish real quick. I took the whole lobster and just slow basted it. And I braised off some fennel, did puff pastry, did lobster whipped mashed potatoes with roasted garlic. Does mashed potatoes even go with lobster? I don't know. Add on the salty end, I think it's just over concentrated. I don't have seafood, that's why I'm asking, Chatter. Why are you yelling at me? Like, imagine dunking on me because I fucking don't know, so I'm asking the chat. Like, what what a what a silly thing. Just has a really nice rustic taste. The fennel is it just looks wonderful. I love that you roasted it. The puff pastry, adding the textural contrast against the creaminess of the lobster mashed potatoes, all of it works beautifully. Thank you, Chef. Well done. Thank you so much. Hey Christian, why don't you have the same respect for these people that they do for you? Oh, Joe is literally fucking oh, he he's just trying to pump up the drama, dude. Straight up. 
put the silverware down and behave like you belong in this kitchen and show these people the same respect they show you. Because if not, I'm gonna personally come over there and throw you out of here. You show no respect and I'm not gonna deal with it. Christian is very confident in his cooking, but he needs to stop being a I don't think that's gonna happen. Sorry. Watching you across a 75 minute challenge with a four pound lobster, I felt at times that you were giving birth to the lobster. <laughs> Every two minutes you were basing, you wouldn't put it down. It's delicious. Thank you, chef. It's got that rustic charm and smart, cooking with the oven door open, closed, and adjusting to the sort of speed of the butter basting the lobster. Congratulations. Thank you, chef. Another big hit. Well done. Thank you. Tough, both with mashed potatoes, one with a mango salad, but the texture is quite extraordinary. You feel like you're going to be happy in top three. You're just not. You're just like, come on, come on, come on. I, choose me for one. Choose me for one. OK, the winner of today's mystery box challenge. That dish belongs to... Oh, come on, dude. Luckily, no ad breaks here, you know? That was a really <laughs> tough decision. The top three dishes have been tasted. Derek's butter poached lobster tail with tomato and mango salad, Alejandra's Thai-style red curry lobster, and Jennifer's baked lobster with roasted fennel. OK, the winner of today's mystery box challenge will have a unique advantage. That dish belongs to... Jennifer. I got a quick glance at Jennifer's dish. Wasn't the best out of the best. Shut up, bitch. That means yours was worse. God damn, dude. Fucking come on, dude. No. You're killing me, dude. A lot better. Thank you. The second mystery box in a row. You are now becoming a serious front runner. Wow. <laughs> come this way. Let's go. As the winner of the mystery box, Jennifer enters the Master Chef Pantry. In this challenge, somebody will be going home, and Jennifer is now in control with a huge advantage. We're about to show you three amazing ingredients, and you'll get to pick which one everyone will cook with today. Today's theme ingredients are aphrodisiacs. <laughs> Bro, she like, dude, she does like the misgift thing, but then she looks like a titan. Look. Get to pick which one everyone will cook with today. Okay. Today's theme ingredients are aphrodisiac. <laughs> That's crazy. That that is like that, that's wild, dude. <laughs> Even Graham's like, come on, okay. Throughout time, there's been a belief that certain foods enhance sexual desire. It's getting a little hot. I think I'm turning every shade of red under the sun. The first aphrodisiac ingredient. Oysters. Of course, class. Pearls of the ocean, the most rarefied, delicious things. And a lot of scientists say that the amino acids contained in them increase our libido. All right, the second aphrodisiac for you to choose from artichokes. Wow. Ugh. According to Greek mythology, Zeus fell in love with a woman of rare beauty. He first promoted her to a goddess and then later turned her into an artichoke. <laughs> so that just goes to show you that love is sometimes complicated. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. And the final aphrodisiac ingredient is beautiful truffle. Absolutely stunning. Everyone from ancient you gotta pick that. to Napoleon really believed that truffles were an aphrodisiac. You have so to pick that. You've got a very, very important decision to make. Which erotic ingredient will you choose? Is it Joe's oysters, Graham's artichoke, 
or my amazing delicious truffles. Oh, fucking truffle, dude. Are you kidding me? Real truffle? That lob right there in front of them is like 10 grand, bro. Are you kidding me? Okay, I don't know actually how much that would cost, but that's a lot. That's very expensive. That, depending on how heavy that shit is, oh my lord. Everyone from ancient Romans to Napoleon really believed that truffles were an aphrodisiac. So, Jennifer, you've got a very, very important decision to make. Which erotic ingredient will you choose? Is it Joe's oysters, Graham's artichoke, or my amazing, delicious truffles? Think carefully. Uh-oh. She better have okay, chosen the truffles, dude. That's the best. Oh. Elimination test. Chatter. Of tonight. Chatter's saying truffles gotta be the hardest. What do you mean? Truffles is the fucking best one and not that hard. Why would truffles be hard, dude? It's like you can make pasta, you can make whatever the fuck with that. Truffles is not hard at all. Aphrodisiacs. The choices were the most amazing oysters, the most phenomenal artichoke, or truffles. Oysters, no, but I love the flavor of truffles. I really want truffles. I'm more in love with truffles than I think I have been with like people that I've dated in the past. Jennifer picked for each of you to have the most amazing $500 black perigo truffle. Each oh. to cook. <laughs> Settle down, Ben. A little aroused, sorry. For winning the previous challenge, Jennifer, you get another advantage. Yep. You don't have to cook today. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. But here's the difference. You can stay and participate in this elimination challenge. How much did they say that was, by the way? I was wrong about 10 grand. I'm sorry. It was 500 bucks. Or okay. you take this glass of bubbles and you disappear up to the gallery. If you lose, you could be eliminated. Think carefully. Take the champagne. <laughs> I came here to cook. That's what I came here to do. But going upstairs, you know, guarantees me top 10. So it you sound like Bill Gates. Hey, dumbass, if I correctly knew how much truffle cost, then I would sound like Bill Gates, not the other way around. <laughs> I bet Bill Gates actually knows how much fucking truffle that much cost. Me greatly overestimating it is like completely normal. So, um, you know, I'm torn. We just want to give you the option of being able to cook with this product. Now. <laughs> that's the point of winning the challenge. Like, take the advantage. This is huge. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> are you watching or are you cooking? I'm going to stay and cook. What the oh. fuck? Dumbass. I hope you get eliminated, dumbass. I'm not that type of person to put my tail between my legs and walk up the stairs. Balls here. It's automatic top 10. I want to cook my way into the top 10, and I'm hoping I don't go home. Uh, Incredible. If you, over the next 60 minutes, produce the worst tasting dish, you'll be leaving MasterChef. Understood. Wow. 60 minutes create something unique and romantic. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Your time starts now. That makes no sense. The entire goal of this fucking game is to win. I would never in a million fucking years risk it. That like hurts my brain to think about. Don't wanna fall. Don't wanna fall. The contestants have just 60 minutes to transform this expensive aphrodisiac into a dish worthy of the judge's affection. Af 
aphrodisiac, really. It is so hard to even try to come up with some kind of sexy dish when the ingredient that you're cooking with looks like dog Careful, Giuseppe. How lucky are they? When you go from reading about them and hearing about them... And then you give no value to cooking as you do in streaming? Yeah, dude. Amaze the little ingredients.